So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where Europe unites and becomes a singular country. Now this is going to be a series and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing every continent except for Antarctica and essentially it's going to be what if every continent formed an empire. Now there's going to be steps leading up to the process but there's also going to be steps afterwards such as the new country taking over other countries and so on and so forth. Now before we jump into this video fully I do have something I want to show you and that would be this which is our 50,000 subscriber plaque. Now once again this isn't an official plaque I made this myself using some tools that I have on Line. but since i have that plaque that obviously means that we have hit 50,000 total subscribers and now that i'm really thinking about it and looking at it that is a huge milestone we have come very far in the span of one year and um today well not today when you're seeing this video but today marks our one year anniversary of mapping so on june 9th i uploaded my first mapping video that would be for the rest of my channel uh, lifespan up until now so there hasn't been a single non-mapping related video since then and uh yeah so one year of mapping has brought us this far we have gone from 2800 subscribers to now 50,000 subscribers all within one year and it's all thanks to you guys and uh that's crazy so we are halfway there to 100,000 subscribers and should we ever hit that milestone uh, the play button will be going right back on that wall uh, above the flags where that tree is right now. Now, I'm not saying that's impossible, but it's unlikely that we'll hit 100k by the end of this year. But I do want to challenge you guys and see if we could do it. Um, that is asking for a lot. That's asking for doubling the subscription count. But anything is possible and um, it's looking good from here on out. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys once again for 50,000 subscribers. Uh, the specials will be coming out soon. So there's going to be two different specials. And yeah. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe. Help us get to 100,000 subscribers. I'm not going to be starting to say that. And let's go ahead and get started. All right. So this is going to be leading up to a larger event. It's going to be having some countries form a union. And from there, it's going to steamroll into the entire continent becoming a country. First off, we have unification in Western Europe. This starts with a union between France and Germany called the European Union. And essentially, these two countries are one of the carrier states of the EU. And them uniting together is a, uh, I would say, is a new frontier for the EU. From here, Luxembourg and Belgium join, followed by the Dutch. And next up, we have a whole lot of Central Europe joining. Now, this new country is going to be extremely economically powerful and is going to function a lot like the EU. So, uh, one centralized currency with a lot of different languages. And the whole idea of the Union is European nationality and the strength of Europe. So at this point, the new European Union is looking like something like this and is going to continue to expand. Next up, we have Denmark joining, as well as Iceland and Ireland. We have Portugal joining. And from here is where it gets interesting. So a lot of these remaining countries are very nationalistic in their, uh, you know, their country's existence. But we do have Italy and narrowly voting to join this new union. And on the same side of things, we also have Spain voting to join. So just like that, the European Union has had a huge power boost and pretty much all of Western Europe has been united. Now, now, there are a few countries that would probably be reluctant to join this and that would be the uk for sure uh poland and hungary and then maybe some of these countries over here which i just pointed to the entire continent but you know what i mean if you're from these countries you would know if your country would want to join this or not next up we have croatia joining followed by this we have sweden and finland joining and now the baltic states so there's going to be some countries who are not going to like this new unification going across the european continent uh, specifically Russia, who in order to counter this decides to form a union with Belarus and ramps up their invasion of Ukraine. They make naval landings in southern Ukraine and push it up and capture all of Ukraine's Black Sea coasts. From here, they use their new front in Belarus to push down over here into northwestern Ukraine and once again down towards Kyiv. Now with Russia's new advance and aggression towards the rest of Europe, we have a lot more countries going to join. Those said countries are now Poland, followed by Hungary, Romania, and Moldova, and finally Bulgaria. So the last few remaining countries in Europe are countries that I would consider as just, you know, either out of the EU or um, too nationalistic to join. The UK is one of those nationalistic countries slash, you know, a government that voted away from the EU a couple years ago, so I don't see them really joining this union right away. Norway isn't even in the EU. And then down south, we have the Balkans, and you know how that goes. So now let's go ahead and focus in on Ukraine. We have Russian troops using all of their military now to invade the country. And eventually we have the fall of Kyiv and the Ukrainians being pushed back towards the border of the EU. And it is here that the EU makes a decision to join in on the war in Ukraine, not against Russia, Russia, but also not for Ukraine. The EU sends its troops into Ukraine and captures the remaining portion of it. And a, a uh, you know, it's not necessarily a you know one-on-one -on -one stand like Russian troops are pointing at European troops and vice versa. 
It's more of, um, hey, how you doing? Nice to see you here in Ukraine. Eventually, the European Union and Russia decide to split Ukraine and devise a peace treaty for the country. All right, looking at this peace treaty here, now you might be a little bit confused and you might be having a, uh, a, a uh, seizure right now because I would as well, um, but we have a new buffer state forming in Europe. Now this could be like the UN buffer zone in Cyprus where nobody owns it except for the UN group, but this could also kind of be a country. Now I'm really hoping it's not, and I'm really hoping it's not owned by anybody. Well, I, I'm, I'm just really hoping that this isn't like a sovereign thing. Is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, hopefully this is a UN buffer zone, but I'm not going to decide that. You can decide it for yourselves. And yeah, we have the rest of Ukraine going over to the EU and Russia getting their half. So now the EU has kind of settled terms with one of their neighbors, Russia, but this isn't probably going to last too long as they also share a very long border with, you know, Northern Russia. So who is next to join the EU? Well, that would be Greece. And now from here, we have some tensions with Turkey as Turkey hates Greece. And they really don't like these Aegean Islands down here. So, um, yeah, we have some tensions between the EU and Turkey. And then, obviously, tensions between Russia and the EU, which already existed. In the UK, we have a new elected official getting the power. And one of the main things he campaigned off of was joining the new European Federation slash Union. And uh, they hold a vote in their parliament. And they narrowly vote. And they narrowly vote to join the Union. So, with this, we have the EU getting a huge boost in troops and economy. And, um... The problem with this would be the currency. I don't know if the UK would want to convert to the Euro, but assuming that they're a member of the country, they would probably have to do so. Over in the North, we now have Norway joining the EU. So uh, this was a longly uh, anticipated event. The Norway is uh, pretty close with the EU in real life. They're not a member of it, but they are close with it, like I said. So they vote to join and the EU is looking pretty close to being finished. The only problem remaining is the Balkans and um, Yes. So next up to join is Albania. And then followed by that, we have Montenegro. And that's as far as it's probably going to go for the Balkans without any kind of military force. Because, um, yeah, uh, all four of these remaining countries have a problem with each other, uh, internal conflicts, or with a member within, such as North Macedonia and Greece. Now, concerning Kosovo, if you recognize it as a country or not, that's up to you to decide. Uh, in the sake of this video, it's going to be a uh, independent country just because it makes for a more interesting uh, future. But we have Kosovo voting to join the European Union, which creates a problem with Serbia, who doesn't recognize it, and they see EU troops moving into Kosovo, which causes them to kind of declare war on the EU. Now, the problem with this is they uh, they just declared war on one of the top five strongest countries in the world, and that's really not going to go too well for them. Luckily, Serbia does have allies, though, and uh, one of those allies is Russia. But the problem with that is Europe is probably now on the same level as Russia, if not a little bit stronger. So this, this is going to be one heck of a war. The EU also has allies, such as the United States, but just for the sake of this video and this video only i'm not going to be having the u.s join in on the sides of any countries in this video so now we have eu troops moving into northern serbia and in from kosovo north macedonia joins the side of the eu in hopes of gaining the respect and trust of greece in order to join the union formally so with this we have a small amount of north macedonian troops moving over into southern serbia and also the problem wouldn't only just be greece it would also be bulgaria so they're also aiming to help them out also if you haven't noticed already i'm sure you probably haven't because it's a minor detail but I did update my lighting and I got a lot better lighting now. Uh, so now instead of seeing one circle in my glasses, you will now see two. I had a smaller ring light over here, but it really wasn't doing it. And plus it was a hassle to, you know, set up. It kept getting knocked over every time I put my stuff around. So I threw that away by throwing it away. I mean, I just threw it into the corner of my room, but I got two of the same lights now. They are on the same setting, I think. And overall the lighting should be good. So like my face on each side should be equally lit. So yeah, anyway, conclusion, I upgraded my lighting, should be better now. Let's get back to this video. So as I was saying, uh, European troops are now flooding into Serbia, and they really have no match. Over in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we have a civil war breaking out, and essentially we just have the Serbs breaking away from the Bosnians and Croats. This really doesn't go well though, because um, the EU is going to help Bosnia out here, and eventually we have the fall of both the Serb side of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Serbia itself. So now let's go ahead and catch up on the border of Russia. We have Russian troops pushing over and connecting with Kaliningrad and also starting an operation in the Baltics. This is going pretty well as they are pushing into surrounding countries slash states, but um, yeah, this is going to stop here because like I said, these two countries are now equally matched. So on the border of Finland, we have a lot of fighting, but no movement. And over near Belarus, we have EU troops pushing back the Russians. Now hope isn't completely lost for Russia here, even though it probably is, because they do manage to get an ally in this war, and that ally is Turkey. Now would Turkey actually backstab their European allies? Uh, 
maybe you know now that i think about that they, they might actually do that but for the sake of not liking european expansion and for the sake of hating greece we do have them joining this war so we now have turkish troops pushing across into mainland europe as well as taking over a lot of these Aegean islands the main goal of the two countries right now is to meet up and cut off the eu from the black sea and uh, we have Russia making some naval landings in Romania. Now, the problem with this is that, once again, Russia isn't nearly as strong as the European Union, and um, they wouldn't be able to really pull us off that well. We have them making some progress over near Kaliningrad, but this is really all they're going to be doing up here, as we have the EU pushing back Russia in the north, in Estonia, in Latvia. We also have the EU making a push out from Finland into Russia, so from here we have them pushing down towards St. Petersburg. And over back in Romania, we have some of these naval landings being pushed back. We have Russia sending some armies down to fight with the Turkish army, in which, you know, these guys do a lot of work. They push over and capture a lot of the panhandle of Greece and up into Bulgaria. After a few more days of fighting, we have the EU getting the upper hand and pushing back Russians to their border. Down south, we also have the Turks getting pushed back to their border, and we have the seizing of Kaliningrad. Turkey's European portion falls, and the EU makes some naval landings on the turkish coast as for russia the europeans push out from estonia and manage to capture st petersburg which is a huge blow to russia in finland we have european troops pushing out and capturing all the way over to the sea which in turn makes this entire area fall to uh the eu now i've said this in a previous video but there is i think there's only one road that connects the infrastructure of this entire area and uh if the eu were to capture that they would essentially be able to capture all this area and hence a lot of Russia's missiles and defense systems. So they might be able to reverse engineer some of that and use it on Russia. I'm not sure if they would. And I'm also not sure if nuclear bombs would be used in this because both of these countries would be nuclear powers. But what I do know is that a lot of cities are getting hit by missiles, both in Russia and the EU. We have the US and other Western countries supplying the EU with defense systems and long range missiles. And we also have countries like China and India. Well, maybe not India, but we also have countries like China and some of these other oh who who would supply russia with weapons probably just china you know we have them supplying them with uh, systems and stuff overall it really isn't enough to stop the europeans from pushing in in turkey we have a lot of fighting as the turkish armies do manage to push across back into the european part but unfortunately for turkey they do start to lose ground on the coast of their country so a lot of this starts to go over towards europe in addition to this we also have cyprus formerly joining the european union and uh, this does cause a problem because the northern half of Cyprus is occupied by Turkey. But luckily, European troops are already ready for this, and they land on the island and take over the northern half. We have Turkey getting pushed back out of Europe, and from here, they lose all of their Aegean Sea coast, as well as Istanbul. At this time, we have both sides agreeing to meet for peace, as a continuation of this war would result in a very large loss of life. Also, the earlier they surrender, the less land they lose, so that's a win for them. Alright, let's break down this peace treaty. So up north, first of all, we have northern Russia going over to the Finnish uh, state slash, you know, the EU as a whole. We have Kaliningrad getting annexed by the EU and the buffer state between the, the EU and Russia is annexed by the EU. In the Balkans, we have Bosnia and North Macedonia being assimilated into the European Union. And with this, we also have Serbia being forced to recognize Kosovo as a country. And with this, we have Kosovo being admitted to the Union. And then the second phase of the treaty begins, which is basically Serbia getting annexed by the EU. In Turkey, we just have Thrace being annexed by the EU. And then we have any kind of disputes in the islands being settled. All right, so um, the EU has now formed itself a country and it's looking good. So we have pretty much all of continental Europe under one country, except for a good chunk of Russia. This would be considered all European in terms of geography. And uh, I think some parts of Georgia would also be considered European, so like this. But just for the sake of this video and for the sake of how it played out, this is going to be the new European continent. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, we have goal. Well, we don't have goals for 2022. We already passed them all and it's not even halfway through 2022 yet. But um, yeah, so uh, subscribe to the channel and the road to 100,000 subscribers begins today. Hopefully we can hit a pretty big milestone by the end of 2022. I'm thinking maybe 75,000 subscribers. Um, we started this year off with, I think we started off with around 25K. So we've already doubled that. So maybe we can, we could possibly get to uh, 75K by the end of this year. I think it's possible. Maybe not 100K. I don't know. You guys can surprise me. I'm sure we could pull it off somehow if I've really tried. I'm thinking of maybe doing another daily upload week for 60,000 subscribers. So yeah, anyway, uh, enough rambling. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Leave any suggestions you have in the comments or any input on the videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video.